Hello everyone, this is Kick, and in today's episode we've got Scarlett Johansson accusing OpenAI of cloning her voice, Elon Musk continuing to pressure Tesla shareholders to make him the holder of a blocking stake, Microsoft unveiling a compact AI model that reads images, Einride building the world's largest network of autonomous electric trucks, a Sony robot surgeon that operated on a corn kernel, and SpaceX showcasing the first video call using a regular smartphone through the Starlink satellite. All this and much more right now, let's go! We'll start today with OpenAI, which continues to be plagued by a series of scandals. Amid the loss of key employees and accusations of attempts to silence them, the company found itself in a conflict with Scarlett Johansson. Her lawyers believe that one of the five voices used by the new version of the chatbot ChatGPT named Sky is indistinguishable from the actress's voice, although nine months ago she refused to voice Sky despite the persuasions of Sam Altman himself. Altman has publicly expressed admiration for the movie Her, where Scarlett Johansson played Samantha, an artificial intelligence that communicates with the main character. The head of OpenAI has repeatedly stated that he wants to give his chatbot Johansson's voice. In September last year, he offered her to voice the ChatGPT 4.0 system. The actress refused. Nevertheless, the Sky Voice interface introduced in May turned out to be strikingly similar to Johansson's voice. When her friends, family, and even the public took notice, Johansson was shocked and angered. She claims that Altman tried to contact her again before the demonstration of GPT 4.0, but they were unable to communicate. OpenAI denies that the Sky Voice was cloned from Johansson or was created with the intention of mimicking her voice. The company claims that the Sky Voice belongs to another professional voice actress who used her natural voice for the recording. However, this has not convinced Johansson who has hired lawyers and is now demanding the company disclose internal materials on how the Sky Voice was created. As a result, OpenAI has suspended the use of this voice variant in its products, which may indirectly indicate that there are issues with the rights to this voice. The conflict with Johansson is not the only reputational problem for OpenAI. The company continues to see an exodus of employees after co-founders Ilya Sutskeva and Jan Leke, who led the super alignment team, left. This team was responsible for ensuring the safety of advanced artificial intelligence systems. Leke accused the OpenAI leadership of focusing more on so-called shiny products instead of important safety research. Meanwhile, Musk continues to pressure Tesla shareholders, demanding to make him the holder of a blocking stake of 25% plus one share. Recently, he presented shareholders with three clear conditions under which he is willing to continue managing the company. Otherwise, he will stop the development of AI and robocars. A recent post on X confirmed and clarified Musk's position. If Elon gets 25% of the votes, Tesla will be incorporated in Texas and the compensation package approved. Then AI and robotics will remain at Tesla and the company can move forward and become the largest in the world. World. The situation is complicated by a lawsuit around the $56 billion worth of Tesla shares that Musk was supposed to receive back in 2018 according to the terms of the contract. However, due to a lawsuit from one of the shareholders, a court in Delaware blocked the payment. Musk is not willing to give up what was promised to him and intends to move the company's headquarters to another state, Texas, hoping that a judge there will rule in his favor. More than two years ago, Musk began developing humanoid robots. Now, prototypes of the Android's Optimus are already working in Tesla showrooms, with mass production planned for 2025. It is expected that the robots will bring the company much more revenue than Tesla electric cars, the demand for which is already falling. And Microsoft announced a new version of its small language model Phi 3, which can browse pictures and tell the user what is depicted on them. Phi 3 Vision is a multimodal model, meaning it can read both text and images, and it is best used on mobile devices. Microsoft states that Phi 3 Vision, now available in a preview version, has 4.2 billion parameters. The number of parameters indicates the complexity of the model and the amount of data it has learned during training. The model is capable of performing general visual analysis tasks, such as answering questions about diagrams or images. Meanwhile, Phi 3 Vision is much smaller than other artificial intelligence models, focused on images, like OpenAI's Dall E or Stability AI's Stable Diffusion. Unlike them, Phi 3 Vision does not generate images but can understand what is on a picture and analyze it for the user. AI model developers are increasingly releasing compact and lightweight solutions such as Phi 3. This is due to the growing demand for accessible and less computationally demanding AI services. Small models are ideal for integrating AI features on devices with limited memory, such such as smartphones and laptops. In addition to Phi 3 and its predecessor Phi 2, Microsoft has already introduced several other compact models. It is reported that Orca Math, a Microsoft model for solving mathematical problems, performs better than larger counterparts like Google's Gemini Pro. Phi 3 Vision is now available for pre-testing. 
Let's move on. The Swedish startup Einride has signed an agreement with DP World to supply hundreds of Einride electric trucks for container transportation at the Jebel Ali port in Dubai. The project is part of the Falcon Rise campaign aimed at creating an autonomous automotive network covering over 550 kilometers of UAE territory. The company intends to put hundreds of freight electric vehicles on the roads, transporting goods throughout the country, including on public roads. Einride offers not only electric transport and autonomous parks for it, but also its own intelligent software platform as well as an extensive infrastructure structure for charging electric vehicles. Unlike competitors, Einride trucks do not have cabins. The system provides for vehicle control through an operator. The entire Falcon Rise system will include about 2,000 electric trucks, 200 vehicles, and more than 500 charging points. Einride first used unmanned electric trucks on U.S. roads in 2022. The company's market value is now estimated at $1 billion. The Falcon Rise program is planned to be completed by 2029. The British, in turn, have legalized robocars. The UK, like other countries, has allowed the testing of autonomous vehicles on public roads for many years. But strict rules have been in place for companies wishing to try out new technologies. However, as the autonomous vehicle industry has developed and prepared for mass adoption, the need for a new legal basis has become apparent. The UK aims to take a leading position in the self-driving car revolution, funding various projects and research programs to ensure the safety of autonomous transport. The government emphasizes the potential safety benefits of autonomous vehicles as they eliminate the human factor on the roads. However, authorities acknowledge that accidents will still occur, as evidenced by reports from the USA, where robotaxis are more widespread. Sony has introduced a setup for performing ultra-precise surgical work. The technology was demonstrated on a corn cob, where the robot managed to stitch a tiny slit on one of the kernels. The development will help surgeons operate on small blood vessels and nerves less than 1 mm in diameter. This is the first setup capable of automatically switching between several tools. The development involves the use of pressure-sensitive controllers resembling a pen, as well as a special stereoscopic system with a 3D camera capable of transmitting the image in real-time to OLED screens. The robot's difference is that it can independently change tools during surgery, it takes less than 10 seconds to switch tweezers, which will relieve surgeons of the need for assistance during operations. The technology was tested at Achi Medical University, where the robot helped doctors perform an anastomosis, a surgery to restore blood vessels in an animal. The technology will improve the skills of novice microsurgeons and enhance their professional qualities while reducing risks during operations and reducing the need for a large number of staff inside the operating room. And what's a kick episode without space? SpaceX has begun testing video calls using regular smartphones through Starlink satellites with direct-to-cell technology. On Tuesday, the company posted a video on its X social media page demonstrating a video call using Starlink satellite cellular communication between unmodified smartphones. The demonstration was conducted near the company's headquarters in Redmond, Washington. The call was made between two employees standing near each other. According to Ben Longmire, SpaceX's senior director of satellite engineering, the company started testing testing the video calling feature after it increased the number of devices supporting cellular communication in orbit from 6 to 38 last week. This allows the connection speed using unmodified Android-based smartphones to reach 17 Mbps. SpaceX plans to launch the Starlink satellite cellular service by the end of this year in the US for T-Mobile customers, allowing them to send messages, make calls, and connect to the internet in remote regions where traditional cellular towers do not provide coverage. However, SpaceX has yet to receive the necessary approval from the U.S. Federal Communications Commission. Perhaps the latest video demonstration of video communication will help convince American regulators to green light the commercial use of this technology. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to stay updated on high-tech news. Peace to your home.